guys, it's Alice again. So today's video is going to be a how I film and edit my videos. A few of you guys have been asking what kind of camera I use, what kind of tripod, what light, different things about how I film my videos. So I decided to sit down and talk you through all the things that I use and how I go about making videos. Before we get started, if you aren't subscribed to my channel, please do make sure you click that subscribe button and join the little family. I upload videos twice a week and I'm sure you'll enjoy them. If you do enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up and that lets me know that you enjoyed it. Let's see if we can get to 200 thumbs up. So let's just get straight into the video. Over the years, I have changed my filming setup ever so slightly. I have now been on YouTube on this channel for almost three years so I have learned a few little tips and tricks and different ways of filming. I have in fact only ever used this camera that I am using right now. This is a Nikon D5100. I originally bought it as a photography camera because I used to do photography and it just happened to have film on it and has a flip out screen so Happily, I already had the camera that I needed when I started my channel. I use a zoom lens and I'm going to leave the name of it here. It didn't come with the camera, I bought it separately. I didn't buy it for YouTube purposes, I bought it for photography. But I find it does really well, especially if I zoom it in a little bit. So I, now it's kind of zoomed in. I might show you actually. Okay, this is fully zoomed out and like the background and everything's kind of the same blurriness. This is zoomed in so you can see that it kind of blurs the background a little bit. I am looking to buy a different lens but for now this one has trekked me well and I also used to use the kit lens which was absolutely fine. Not too long ago I actually invested in a mic. I have an external mic and it's the Rode VideoMic Pro. I didn't have one of these and I really didn't see the point in getting one but as soon as I switched to having a microphone I could just totally tell the difference and you can't really tell the difference unless the microphone is turned off. It does make a lot of difference but it's not something that's a really necessity because you can't really tell like I know I never got any comments about the sound quality because the microphone on the camera itself is actually really good. I then have a big umbrella light behind my setup and it is actually a panel light and it's called the Aperture Amram and then it's got a load of numbers on the bottom. I'm gonna link everything down below anyway, so if you want to see where they're from and how much they were, I'll put them all down below. But it's just a LED panel light and it emits like a really white light. It has a filter that means you can put more of like an orange tint on it, but I just leave it on the white setting and that's about it. You can get different panel lights that have like warm temperatures and other things, but they were more expensive and I figured I could just deal with what it is now. I actually am so happy with my panel light. It's so small and thin and easy to store which is so important because I always have my light up and especially in my uni room it's kind of hard to store things away so this light is definitely so much better. Before this I used to have soft boxes and soft boxes are great and they're cheaper and they're just handy but they are just so bulky and you have to you can't really store them and you have to take them down every time and it's just a bit of a faff. So I upgraded to the panel light. The soft boxes treated me well and they do a great job. So for beginners, I definitely say get a soft box. But if you're kind of serious about YouTube and you want to take it that bit further and your soft boxes are annoying you, then buy a panel light. It's honestly the best thing ever. I love my panel light. The light itself is on a light stand. Just a basic light stand. It's really lightweight and easy to carry because I have to take it backwards and forwards from uni sometimes. So I'm all up for the light, easy things to carry that aren't too bulky. And then as for what my camera is stood on, my camera is stood on a little tripod I actually got probably about five years ago when I used to film videos on my old channel. I think it was about like £30. It's really thin. It's not like the most high quality of tripods, but it holds my camera, it stands still, it doesn't fall over. So that's all I need from a tripod. And what I like about it is that it's got like a quick release on it, but the quick release means that I don't ever have to like unscrew the bottom bit every time I take my camera off. It just kind of clicks off and then you're done. And I really, really like this tripod again because it's light and easy to carry it around. I've actually just had to change the memory card on my camera because it was full, but I thought I'd show you the memory card whilst I'm here. I actually use these little SanDisk memory cards. I usually use 8 gigabytes. I just have a 4 gig in it right now. I'd say if you were looking for a memory card, get either an 8 or a 16 gig. It's only because I've got another video on the other card that this one ran out so soon, but usually an 8 gig is absolutely fine. So don't go like buying a ridiculous like 132 because it's not really that necessary. So that is the equipment that I use for my main channel videos. Now onto my vlog one. I use the Canon G7X Mark II. It's the new version that has like a funky screen and it is absolutely amazing. I love this camera. 
it was very expensive. I wouldn't recommend a kind of new YouTuber or someone just starting out or anything to buy this camera because I feel like it's a definite investment and you have to be completely sure that this is something you want to do and something that you want to put that much money into and I am so I did. Before this camera I used the Canon S120 and I absolutely loved that camera and it served me so well for two years. The Canon G7X, the Mark 1, is actually like amazing. A lot of my friends use that camera and that's just as good. And it is now cheaper because this one came out. So I definitely, I love this camera a lot. And if you've got the budget for this camera, get it. But if not, just get the G7X or the S120. They are just as good. And I also have a little fuzz on top of it. And I get asked questions about this a lot, mainly when I shove my camera in someone's face. And you can actually buy these for like £12, but I decided that was too much. So I actually made it. It's basically just sticky back Velcro. And I chopped out a hole for the microphone, did the same on the other half, and then stuck a part of a furry sock, like the pom-pom off a furry sock is on the top of my camera but it works very well and that just kind of stops the wind noise so when I'm vlogging outside you don't hear like the sound from the wind that's all that is and it just looks a bit funky when I shove my camera in people's face they ask why my camera has hair so for editing my videos I actually use Final Cut Pro X I love Final Cut Pro and I think it's such a good investment if you're serious on YouTube I wouldn't say it's necessary for everyone like if you're just starting out if you don't have the budget again I wouldn't bother. I used iMovie for at least six months before I bought Final Cut Pro and I found iMovie just as good really. I'd totally go back to iMovie if I needed to but I again because I wanted to take YouTube a bit more seriously invested that bit of money in Final Cut Pro. It is very expensive so I'd say just stick at iMovie. When I originally started YouTube I used Windows Movie Maker and also a Windows software called Sony Vegas Pro 9 and they were all brilliant and they, I got them for free so definitely just find whatever you can afford in terms of video editing software as long as you can use it and you understand it I don't think it really matters on what kind of software it is. In terms of what editing I actually do on my videos I don't ever really do anything too snazzy I just chop out the bits when I say something wrong or time it to some music I don't really have any set like transitions or colour overlays that I do, I just try and keep it more natural, like I never ever change the colour balance, I try and get it right here as opposed to on my laptop. What I do have though is a few overlays, so I know at the beginning of this video you'll have seen a little overlay that says subscribe, I'll pop it up right now so you can see it again. This little overlay I was thinking of making myself and I actually found a whole bunch of overlays on YouTube with like green backgrounds. So I downloaded that from YouTube and all you need to do is use the Kia mask out of the video setting bit of Final Cut and put that on top of the thing and then the green background disappears and then you have a little subscriber button floating around. There's so many different ones and I probably am going to go and look through some more and see what else I can find but I thought it was just a lot easier than making my own. I just pinched someone else's. I also have a little like social media -y thing that pops up, I'll put it here again. And I actually made this one myself. This one was made on After Effects and that's like a super duper complicated advanced Adobe software and I only know how to use that because of university and I'm probably not going to make another one because it took so long for me to do. I used to do that. I have like a vlogging one that I pop up here and that's not animated at all, it's just a flat image and I use the wipe transition to get that on and off or swipe or something. I don't know, I'll show you. <laughs> As for my thumbnails, so when you command control 4, um, a little like X comes up on your screen and you can like drag it across and screenshot a particular area of your screen. And when you command control 3, it just screenshots the entire screen and that's how I get my thumbnails. I usually do the thumbnails as I am editing, otherwise you have to go back through and look for the thumbnails and then it just takes forever. And then to put together the thumbnails, I use a little app called Composure that I found on Mac and basically it's a little collage thing, so I drag my photos into there and then you can put your photos in, change the sizes, change the layout, zoom them in a bit and then once I have a nice like composition, I save that as a JPEG and just drag that over into Photoshop. So I don't ever do any like picture editing in Composure because it's very basic, that's literally just for the layout. But if I want to change like the brightness, the contrast or anything, I go into Photoshop. And I also use Photoshop to put over my little titles and things. So I have like a set border I have created myself and I drag that into the new thumbnail, change the writing, 
ties it all up and then it kind of all fits in. So that's how I film and edit my videos. I don't do anything snazzy. I've done it for so long I feel like it's just second nature to me but I know some of you guys are probably new to this or want some tips so I'm hoping that this video helped you out. If it did help you out please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. We're trying to get to 200 thumbs up so let's see if we can get there. Again if you aren't already subscribed please do, I'd love that a lot and you can join the family. Thank you so so much for watching this video guys, I love you all a lot and I'll see you very soon for another video.